I want to go back to the story about selling your house and then working in the bar and writing the script during the day. I'd love yeah. to hear that story. Yeah, so uh, well, my best friend growing up is this guy, Brandon Barrera. And uh, we, uh, he's, he's the big business savvy guy and I'm the big creative guy. And um, we, he convinced me to buy, go in with him and buy this house. So we bought a house in Hollywood. Uh, this was, you know, I had money from Peter Pan and some other acting jobs. Um, and we had this house and then I got into making this movie and I'm like, Brandon, how about we do a production company, sell the house, finance the movie? He said, sure, let's do it. We financed the movie. Um, two years later, I'm broke. I learned about something called capital gains tax. You should know about that before you sell a house, kids. Uh, so I got hit with just dozens and dozens of thousands of dollars in debt. I, I think it was 80,000 at one point. And, uh, you know, I was worried about having to, I had the LLC for the movie and we had this production company and I went to work and I was, I moved into this apartment that I call the hovel and, uh, lived there, worked every single night. Uh, where, where were you? Working? I was working at the village idiot on Melrose and Martell, oh, okay. uh, which is a great bar. And these, the, the guys who own the bar, they had just sunk everything they had into opening this bar. And uh, I, I would come into work every morning to pick up my tips, like right as they opened. And one day my boss was like, uh, Blaine, tell me the truth. Do you have a drug problem? And I'm like, what? Like, what, do you, what do you mean? He's like, nobody needs 80 bucks so bad that they get here at 9 a.m. He's like, what's the deal? And I told him, I just, I just spent everything I have and a lot that I don't to make this movie. And he's like, well, I just did that for this restaurant. So we were in this same situation exactly, and we kind of became great friends. They would always work, work me and let me do uh, overtime to get a little extra money, and very frowned on the restaurant world. But they, you know, were, were such supporters. Um, ironically, not ironically, we, we've become very close, me and those guys, and the after party for the L.A. premiere of Cut to the Chase will be at the Village Idiot, which... Oh, that's great. I love synchronicity. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I was writing every day. I'd get up early in the morning and I'd write. And I wrote four or five scripts that year, the, the year of the hovel. Um, and <laughs> like, it was literally almost exactly a year because right as the lease was running out, Weather Girl came together. Um, I was able to get out of there. I got paid a proper fee to direct, you know, and I got to direct Mark Harmon and Caitlin Olson and John Cryer and Jane Lynch. It was like, it was a totally different, you know, experience for me. And like, I did, there was a time where I didn't think that would ever happen, but it was just tenacity. And if I hadn't have been in the hovel, I don't know if I would have been as writing as much as I was. And I don't know if I would have done Weather Girl. So, you know, it, it, I guess it paid off. So that being sort of in this really uncomfortable place or a place that you just felt like this is not what I wanted for my life. Yeah. Pushed you, it sounds like. Yeah, I, I think so. And you know, like what's funny is I, I have a weird outlet to it, I guess. But like when, when young people ask me, you know, uh, should I pursue this, this acting, this writing, you know, uh, directing, anything in this business really, I, I usually say we well, have to look at it like I'm being an artist. You're choosing an artist lifestyle. Right? If you're choosing to be famous, that's you're not. That's not reality. You know, you have to look at it and say, "Am I willing to be broke? Am I willing to have to work, you know, several jobs in order to chase this dream?" You know, and if you're okay with that, then this is the place for you. You should absolutely do it. If you're not, I bet you there's lots of different options. You know what I mean? So, like, I, I kind of I try to take it with a grain of salt. Just like that's that down spiral led to Weather Girl, which is one of the high points of my career. So. so let's talk about when, I don't know how late you worked at the bar in terms of hours, like 2 oh, a.m. Yeah, sure. and you're cleaning up and so mm -hmm. it's like maybe 3 or whatever you're getting home. Yeah. You're getting up early in the morning. How much sleep are you getting? Oh, sleep, sleep, especially those days didn't really work into it. it like, cause the bar had just opened and it, like the, the new staff was always hanging out and drinking very late and then getting up early in the morning. Yeah. It, uh, sleep didn't really work into it very, very much. Um, but like, you know, an, another funny thing about this life is I need to be able to audition, you know, and take meetings Monday through Friday. So I'm working. Those are my, like, I have to be available, right? So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, holidays, I'm working. So where most people have the day off, that's when I go in, you know, and, uh, because if LA is closed, that's the only time I can literally wait tables all day long or whatever, you know. 
But uh, it was a rough time. It was a rough time. I don't, I don't recommend it. So how are you having the discipline to write, especially when writing just takes this, this like concentrated effort and then when you're in another world that's maybe a little more chaotic, I think it's hard to harness that. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I mean, it's kind of like, to me, it's just how bad do you want it? You know, how bad do you, do you want this thing? It's like, if I can't get up and write in the morning, then why am I waiting tables to begin with? You know, I could, you know, I have a college degree. I can go out and get some job where, you know, I'm on salary and, you know, I won't be able to go to auditions. I won't be able to have meetings. I certainly won't have time to write. I'm doing this so that I can write. So if I'm not writing, then all that time waste is wasted, you know, at the, at the, the night job. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? It does. Like the two things feed each other. I think the more I hate my job, the more I get up in the morning and write. <laughs> any, any bad customer situations that just really fueled you and you were able to just put them into the script? Oh, oh man. Or... For sure. Weather Girl is literally, <laughs> <laughs> literally about a girl in the entertainment industry. She's, you know, a weather person uh, and she quits her job and then can't get rehired because she quits it very publicly and she has to go wait tables. It's like, if that's not, it, it's literally what happened to me. Like, I made this movie. I was a director, actor, hot shot. Couldn't sell it. I'm back to waiting tables, and I'm waiting on people that, you know, just uh, six months beforehand, I would have hired. So, yeah, like, all of those experiences fed into, you know, what Weather Girl was about to me. Why? Now, I just want to go back to the house thing. So, when you sold the house, do you mind if I ask what year this was? Uh, uh, 2005, I think. Oh, okay. So it was on an upswing. Yeah, it was yeah. Really well. I got out yeah. of it, it just, right yeah. before. Mm -hmm. Like that would have changed everything. Like if I had owned that place a little bit longer, and then the bubble happened, I certainly wouldn't have been able to finance my movie. Right. And did you like living there? It was yeah. a nice place. Okay. It was great. It's probably a hard decision to make, wasn't it? No. That no, was not at all. I was young and impetuous, and you know, it was like I was making a movie. It was very exciting. I was not. The, the the hardest thing about making independent film at 40 years old is I know too much, you know? Like, I'm <laughs> more scared now than I ever was in my 20s or even mid-30s, you know? It's like, now I know that I'm risking things. Then I'm just following my dream and doing cool stuff. Like, I, I love being a part of this club of directors and producers who have gone out and made something they've gone they've taken a blank sheet of paper and now there's a movie that's there it's a small organization of people you know who who have the chutzpah and the you know ability you know to, to even get it done much less if it's good um so i i love it it's a, it's a very brave and you know exciting group of people i think too people are more forgiving of an 18 year old or 19 year old making a mistake Sure. Than yeah. they are of someone over thirty. I think that that's another scary thing. Absolutely. Yeah. It's much less romantic, you know, when you know uh, a forty-year-old blows it. You know, twenty-five-year-old, you're just learning. Right? Sure. Sure. So, I think people uh, are softer so on them. So I just yeah. have to not blow it. That's the key. <laughs> Were there ever times when, let's suppose, things weren't going that well, that you regretted selling the house? and trying to make this movie, knowing that you'd come from a position where you were doing well in that sense. You have property mm -hmm. in LA. That's, that's not hard. That's, excuse me, that's very hard to do. But, and then you're in the hovel. Right. Was there times when you said, was this all worth it? No, no, because like, and like, not to say that there aren't times where I haven't thought, well, that I've made bad choices but not when it comes to the movies. The movies to me are like, you know, I'm not married, I don't have kids, uh, and I, most of my friends would be very offended if I compared my movie to them having kids. But to me, that's what it is. Like, once it's come to fruition, uh, I would never regret anything that led to Weather Girl or Six Month Rule or Cuts to the Chase existing. Um, it, because it's not just mine, you know? that That's... One of my favorite things about directing and, uh, you know, being the person that has to go out and raise the money, which is not something I enjoy, of course, few people do, but I build a team, you know, and then they count on me. There's this paternal feeling that you have towards not only the movie itself, but the people who helped make it. You owe them something, you know, it's like you put your sweat and art into the making 
this feature better. And uh, it's my job to protect that and to get it all the way through to the, to the finish line. And like, I could never say, oh man, I wish I had made Outside Sales because like Outside Sales was the movie that made me a director. You know, and the whole reason I became a director was a bad experience I had on this film that I, called Manic. That I wrote Manic with, with another writer and I really didn't like the director. And it was a really rough shoot for me. And, but it made me think, if this guy can do it, I can direct, you know? And like, I don't know if I would have become a director if I hadn't have had that bad experience on that, on that shoot. But I did, and now here I am, you know? Right. Four so features under my belt and, you yeah. know, eight produced screenplays. And like, excellent. I, I don't regret it. Like, there are things that I wish, you know, would spin a different way, but like, who doesn't?